am here to talk about how to take a handful of reading assessments and then group your students using those assessments quickly so that you can get started into guided reading groups or small group reading instruction as fast as possible. And I hope that this will save you some time in planning and in classroom time. And then you'll see your readers accelerate. That's what we do here at Reading Simplified. Welcome, I'm Marnie Ginsberg, and I'm going to sh just give you a little presentation on a few easy tests that I'm going to give you uh, uh, for free that can help streamline reading instructions. So the first thing, kind of as a background to this, is that the way that this is simplified for us when we're using the Reading Simplified approach is that uh, we only use or we don't only, but we choose mainly three core activities called Switch It, Read It, and Sort It. And you can learn about those at that um, website that's listed there, readingsimplified.com forward slash start dash here, forward slash start, yeah, dash here. And so we're not going to talk too much today about those activities. A lot of you have probably heard about Switch It before, at least that. Maybe you've heard about all of them. And um, so I, but I prefaced everything that I say here with that because um, the grouping that I'm going to recommend is based on these three core activities. And so if you don't know what these three core activities are and you're just coming to Reading Simplified out of the blue, you may not be able to follow as easily. So just know that I provide teaching about this on that website. And also if you haven't seen me present about those three core activities in a workshop, I would love for you to join me. Um, if you go to the any page on my blog, readingsimplified.com, you can see at the top banner an opportunity to join in a workshop that's coming up. So please keep that in mind if you want to know how to streamline your reading instruction with particular activities that save you a lot of time. So that's a little background. The assessment and the grouping is kind of contingent on knowing that we only have a handful of tests, of activities rather, that we can uh, turn to to move kids along rapidly. If you're working with kids who are first grade and up, then you need to think more about these tests, okay? Think about the nonsense word reading test um, and particularly also give a standardized one, one that's norm, so you can compare that student's pro progress with other students that are their age. Also, I recommend a San Diego Quick Assessment, which is a one free measure that you can use to get word identification. In other words, if students are given a list of words um, uh, that are graded, how do they do reading just that list of words? And that list of words is highly correlated with overall reading achievement. So even though it seems like it's a very low level subskill, it's very connected to a higher level reading achievement, so don't um, minimize the power of that measure. And then also to check students' reading rate uh, or their fluency. So those are the three tests that you would use for those kiddos who are older. And these kids, kids can be second grade, they can be fifth grade, they can be eighth graders who need to be um, getting a boost in reading. Um, maybe even in your kindergarten classroom you have kids who are reading at the mid first grade level and above. Or maybe in your second grade classroom you have kids who are at the mid first grade level and above. So this um, section, uh, to wrap up what this today's topic, will r relate to um, all the older kids. And this even applies, frankly, to seventh graders and high schoolers. It's the same kind of um, system that I use when I'm tutoring kids of all ages who need a boost. So what are those three tests? These are the three tests that we reviewed earlier that those um, mid first grade and up readers need. A nonsense word reading test, and particularly one that's standardized or norm so that you know how they compare with their peers. And I'm gonna show you a link to get one for, for free. And then you need a word identification test. And again, I'm providing a link to get a free version of that. That's called the San Diego Quick Assessment if you don't have something that's normed or um, you know, comparing your student with other students um, in a larger sample. And then reading rate or fluency that relates to the word identification above. In other words, once you figure out the student's word identification level, like say they're able to read second grade level words, then I want to give them a second grade level passage to check their reading rate. So if they're a fourth grader, reading second grader level words, like their word ID is second grade, I don't want to give them a fourth grade passage to check their reading rate. 
I want to give them a reading rate passage that's at their word identification level. So here's a nonsense word test. Here's a place where you can get it for free. Okay, there's one that is um, just an informal one that I've provided. But also on that same site is a standardized norm test that I'm linking to. So I think both can be helpful because one will give you comparisons um, very clearly based on the four sounds, five sounds, six sounds, and so on. And the other one will give you that comparison with peers. And then you would also want to give a word identification test. Again, I'm linking to um, a free one that you can give. And these words just get progressively harder so you can see what level your student is able to read. And then, um, based on their word identification, you choose a graded passage to give students something short to read aloud and you time them. And you want to see how many words they read correctly in one minute, and then you can compare that to national norms. And again, I have a link there at that website, readingsimplified.com forward slash reading dash tests for um, how to compare a student with their international or net, rather national norms. And those norms are based on the U.S., but I don't think they would vary hugely in other English speaking countries. So that's going to give you a, a good background knowledge, but now we want to start moving closer to grouping. So you do the same thing with these older kids that we did with the younger kids, or I shouldn't say older and younger, and more advanced readers and less advanced readers. You take that nonsense word reading test, which again is helpful because it really gets zeros into whether or not they're using a sound symbol matching approach or sound-based decoding approach, or they're just memorizing based on the beginning part letter sound or maybe parts of the letter sounds of, in the word, but not really a full left to right blending of the, the word's properties. So that's why the nonsense word test is so important. So maybe they're able just to blend and read a CVC or a three sound word. Then you would start with switch it. If they're at CVC, we don't teach them at the CVC level. We teach them at the next level up, maybe even two levels up. And similarly, look here, we've got four sound words. If they're able to do that, but not five sound, then we start them with five sound switch it. If they're able to do five sound switch it, but um, not six sound switch it, then we start them with six sound switch it. And then finally, if they're just able to read a CCC, VCC word, which is even hard for me to say, it would be hard to read. Um, if they can do that, then they just need to go into the similar level or, a, you know, like CCVCC or CCCVCC, but at nonsense words so that they can quickly move between um, uh, words and also they really develop their phonemic manipulation and phonemic segmentation that way. So that is how we start to place kids for switch it. And then then we just group for sorted. Again, these kids are probably able to do read it. And so we move to the next level of sort it. And this is what we do. Basically, anyone who is not super fluent and not above, far above their grade level would benefit from going through the sort it activities and our sort it mindset as we uh, approach read, um, decodable text. So those students, if they can read CVC nonsense words, for the most part, maybe they're not perfect, but they can do it some of the time, then you would begin sort it with them. Students who read at higher grade levels can use harder word lists. So everybody can do sort it if they fall into this category. Some kids may get words like for the O sound for sort it, like go and show, and other kids may get, you know, harder level, harder level words that are two sound that have the O sound. Um, so that's just how you vary the difficulty um, but you keep the same activity. And that's one reason that it's helpful to get that great, another reason it's helped to, helpful to get that graded word identification knowledge so that you know, okay, they're actually doing, you know, they're pretty much like on grade level. If they're in the second grade, then, then I know they know hundreds of high frequency sight words. I don't need to worry about giving them the word go and show. I'll give them the harder word list. So that's grouping. And then you do the same thing that we did for the younger kids or the younger readers. Um, you group them based on the streamlined pathway. And this is a first grade pathway. And this is pretty similar to what every kid will get um, 
first grade and above. Notice down here in level one, unlike the kindergarten pathway, we don't have four levels for learning all the consonants and all the consonant digraphs and all the short vowels. Rather, all of that is collapsed into one level. So you review that stuff, pick a switch at level that's applicable for those students, but you move quick, quickly, if not immediately, at the beginning of the year into advanced phonics and start with sort it. So some kids will be doing switch it with five sound words and sort it with fairly easy words like go and show. Other kids will be doing switch it with maybe three or four sound words and um, sort it with uh, even easier words. And so you then everybody is given a d difficult, more and more difficult level of switch it and they're doing the same O sound because you're probably going to start them at the same place so that, that you can get them all through the, the streamlined pathway learning the basic phonics not information that they need to be able to infer more and more words themselves. And so some kids are going to be um, at uh, level one and some kids will be at level two. And some of those kids at level two will be doing easy O words, and some of those kids at level two will be doing hard O words. Some of those kids at level two will be doing easy O text, some of them will be do doing hard O text. And so one group may move within two or three days to level three if, that's, if they're just flying through this. But the, another group may take a whole week to do the O sound. So then you start to stagger your groups and they're shifting and their progression up the streamlined pathway. There is basically um, only a few tests that you need to be able to get general grouping started at the beginning of the year. Um, assuming you know that there's only a handful of activities that it takes to move kids along to become good readers. And if you don't know about those activities that I've been discussing about, please go here to this website, readingsimplified.com forward slash start dash here to find out about these three activities, switch it, read it, and sort it.